Hey, hey, hey there, team. It's your chemistry coach coming at you with some varsity chemistry today. Welcome to video number four in our titrations, buffers, and common ion effect. This is going to cover the, we covered buffers last time, so now we're going to look at the quantitative aspects of what happens to the pH of a buffer. How do we calculate the pH of a buffer using the henderson hasselbalch equation, which we derived for weak acids and weak bases. I'll give you those equations on quizzes and exams, though. And then we're going to go, well, how does that pH actually change quantitatively if we add some strong acid or strong base to it? All right, so get, get your calculators for lots of calculations. I want to introduce you to Tubby. And if you've had my classes, I talk about my three-legged fat diabetic cat a lot. This is the three-legged cat <laughs> with diabetes. we got to shoot up with insulin every single day. Poor guy. Anyway, he doesn't, he just wants to sleep and eat. That's Tubby. So some of you uh, uh, have heard about that cat often uh, when we talk about uh, giving shots and things like that and getting bubbles out. It's kind of funny. Um, another thing real quick, for the astute, aware students of mine out there, I made a mistake in one of my recent videos. Ooh, <laughs> yes, I am human, it happens. It wasn't a major one, but still bothers me. Uh, to, to have, I review these videos and I saw it and I'm like, ooh, but I left it in there. It's in uh, the common ion effect video, the first video for this chapter, it covers the common ion effect. The first person who can catch that video uh, and email me, I will give you three extra credit points. Not a lot, right? It ain't gonna change your grade, but you can be vic the victorious one to find that error. See if you can catch it. Again, it's not a major one, it doesn't affect uh, calculations, but see if you can catch it. Um, I'm kind of curious about that one. All right, after flip-flopping with some uh, Seether and uh, Sarah Borelli, it's time to get started here. Uh, let me write up some uh, problems on the board for you, and then I think you can do the first problem. I'm going to do a part A, what's the pH of a buffer, so go find your notes on the henderson hasselbalch equation. I'll give you all the necessary information. See if you can calculate that on your own, and then we'll add some acid or base to it and see how the pH changes. Lots of math today! All right, get out your pencils, pens, or whatever your, your favorite writing utensil is. Maybe you're doing it directly on your screen, on your computers. You techie people, you. Here's the problem today. You ready? Let's say part A. We got a buffer. Now, I'm not always going to say there's a buffer, but let me show you how to recognize it. What's the pH of a buffer consisting of 0.456 molar acetic acid and 0.521 molar sodium acetate. All right, so you can recognize, even if I didn't say buffer, you could see you've got a weak acid and the sodium salt of its conjugate base, and they're very close to being the same concentration. That's what makes it a buffer. If those concentrations differ by a factor of 10 or more, you know, 10's not too bad, um, but you know, if they're more more than ten or you know a hundred or so or uh, difference, that that buffer starts to break down. It's outside of the effective buffer range, uh, so they got to be pretty close. And I'll try to make that obvious on quizzes and tests. They'll be pretty close to each other. Ideally, they're exactly the same so that they cancel out in the henderson hasselbalch equation. Right? So let's think about this. You can do this part in your head. If not, that's fine. If you want to write this down, but the conjugate base of Acetic acid is not sodium acetate, it's the acetate ion. So let's take a look at what's the concentration of the acetate ion. All right, so let's take our sodium acetate. Here's our sodium acetate. Understanding that that is a soluble salt, right? Any alkali metal salt is going to be 100% soluble in water. So that's going to dissociate 100% in water. That's going to give us the sodium ion plus the acetate ion. And again, a lot of you could just do this in your head. You don't have to write this down. You could see that the concentration of the sodium acetate, which is 0.521 molar, will be the same as the sodium, which doesn't matter to us. It's just you know electrical balance in the solution. And the 0.521 molar, so the sodium acetate here breaks up, and the acetate ion, this will be our A minus, right? And the acetic acid will be our HA in the henderson hasselbalch equation. So again, if you can do that in your head, more power to you. Uh, that'll be just fine. 
let's set up the buffer, right, to identify again. Now, again, you don't need this next step if you can see the HA and the A minus in your head, and you can go straight to the Henderson Hasbach equation. I just want to be more complete. If you're not quite there yet, that's okay. I tend personally, uh, if I skip steps, I tend to get lost and confused. Um, and those of you who have seen my lectures, uh, I get distracted real easy, and I go off on, on bunny trails left and right. <laughs> I, I, I was one of those hyper kids, you know, um, with the focus issue. So I, I need to write every step down, and if that helps you, great, but some of you can bypass that because you're able to focus a little better than I could. But if I can get a PhD, you can get an A. Here we go. Let's take a look. We've got our weak acid, so HC2H3O2. This will be, I'll write weak acid there, and I'll put in parentheses HA, all right? That's the HA in the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. This is going to ionize in water. Remember, we got a buffer, which means you've got a weak acid and its conjugate base in equilibrium and roughly the same concentrations, or a weak base and its conjugate acid, roughly the same concentrations in equilibrium. So this acid is going to donate its proton to water to leave you with the conjugate base, the acetate ion, plus hydronium again. Oh, are you guys getting so sick of that equation over and over and over? So over here, this is my conjugate base, and that again will be the A minus in the henderson hasselbach equation. So what we need is the concentration of HA, and the concentration of A minus, and the Ka for this equation, this weak acid. So let's get our trusty, is stapled to your hip at this point, our Ka table. Let's look for, what do we got, acetic acid right at the top. Isn't that awesome? 1.8 times 10 to minus 5th. Isn't that the same as ammonia? I think that's, that sounds familiar. I think that was ammonia the other day. So 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. I think we've got all the information we need to pop this into the henderson hasselbach equation. Yay! Yeah. Here we go. Let's do this in blue. I'll just call this the HH -H equation. Right? I'm not going to write out the henderson hasselbach equation over. It makes me think of Hasselhoff, like the henderson hasselhoff equation, Knight Rider. Dee -dee 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 well, that kind of ages me a little bit there. Go 80s, baby! All right. So henderson hasselbach equation. What was that? pH. I don't want to derive the whole thing again. Wasn't that pH is pKa plus the log of the conjugate base over the weak acid? Go check that with me and uh, let me know if I got that right. <laughs> I think that's correct. All right? Do we know the Ka? Check! Do we know the A minus concentration? Check. Do we know the AJ concentration? Check. Got that, got that, got that. Do all your logs, watch, you know, track your uncertainty. And we got the pH of this buffer. So when you recognize it's a buffer, and I give you this equation, boom. My BG kitty cat wants to get out. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Okay, I got to keep the door closed. My kids are, you know, like I said, we're homeschooling all our kids, and I got four kids, and they're all over the place, so it gets a little crazy. Um, so cats want in and out. Here we go. So this will be the negative log of the Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus fifth, right on. Remember to pee on some things, take the negative log of it. Woo, we love math functions. Uh, plus... The base 10 log, and the reason we're using base 10 log again is because we want pH. pH is negative base 10 log of the H2O plus. What's our A minus? That's the conjugate base, the acetate ion. That's 0.5 to 1 molar. You don't really have to put the molar. They're going to cancel out. Um, divided by HA, that's our weak acid, our acetic acid. Da, 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 da. Wait a minute. I put the wrong concentration here. <laughs> Notice, I almost made another error. I put 5, 2.521. Oh, no, no, I'm looking at the wrong equation. <gasps> I almost failed my own exam. I'm looking at the wrong thing. I need to be looking at this. All right, so the A minus is 0.521. The HA is 0.456. I almost put the wrong number down there. 0.456.
Good thing you guys are paying attention. Ha! Huh? All right. Um, these molarities are going to cancel out here. Boom, boom. We're going to get three significant digits. So let's do this log term, and let's calculate this term in there. we got to do this in a couple steps to track uncertainty. Okay, so pH. Let's do the negative log. So we have two significant digits here, which will give us two decimal places. So what do you get? 4.74 vertical dash line 47. So that's the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to minus fifth, 4.7447. Go to two decimal places. Plus the log. Now I'm going to take the 0.521 divided by the 0.456 to three significant digits. Right? I get 1.1425. And I want to do that term to see what that is. I guess you could skip this step. You could kind of do that. Know you're at three sig figs, which will give you three decimal places in the logarithm. So let's carry this over. So this would be 4.7447 4, plus, now let's take the logarithm of 1.1425. Three significant figures will give us three decimal places. I get 0 0.057, 0 0.057. Ooh, there goes the pen. There goes the pen. Where goes? Oh, sorry, kitty. That's so sorry. My little, like, five-week-old kitten just got nailed by a pen. Anyway, so here's the base of the pH of that. Remember, the, the buffer, the base is just the, the, K, the pKa of the weak acid in this scenario. And then there's an adjustment factor based on the ratio of the conjugate base concentration over the weak acid concentration. If those are equal, then the pH is just the pKa. you got to love that. But they're not equal. So this is think of this as an adjustment factor, this 0.04057. Two decimal places here, three decimal places there. I'm going to be good to two decimal places. I get 4.80 vertical dash line 25. So that's closer to 4.80 than 4.81. So that stays as 4.80. That's our pH. Well, that's a full board. I can't believe we got that all on one board. Next one's going to be worse, <laughs> right? Because we got to do, when we add acid to this, we got to do the uh, neutralization stoichiometry first to see how the concentrations of the A- minus and the HA change after adding acid or base. And then calculate those new concentrations, and then plug them back into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So it's double the fun in the sun. Okay? So 4.80, and that makes sense. This is a weak acid buffer, right? So it should be less than 7. Let me set up the board for part B. We're going to try to blast this buffer into oblivion. Hi, guys. Working at home sucks so much. It does. Oh, working at home. Okay, sorry, I got distracted again. Land to the problem. All right, you ready for the second half of this? And this is what's new here. We're going to, well, not really new. We're just taking some stoichiometry we had from first semester of general chemistry and adding it to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for buffers. So each one is relatively straightforward. Just putting them together and thinking about the order you need to do them in, that's where people have trouble. But they're pretty extensive calculations, but not terribly difficult if you know the order of what you're doing. All right, so we've got the original pH of our buffer in part A. Now, what if we had 10.00 milliliters of 0 0.124 molar hydrochloric acid? That's a strong acid, right? So that's going to ionize 100% in solution into chloride ions and hydronium ions. So really, that'll be the concentration of the hydronium ion as well. The chloride doesn't do anything. We're going to add 10.00 milliliters of that acid to 90.00 milliliters of the buffer solution. Those numbers are conveniently written, as you can tell, because when I add these two together, you're going to add the 10.00 and the 90.00 milliliters to get 100.00 milliliters of total buffer solution after you add the acid to it. So there's a dilution factor, which is going to drop all the concentrations of everything. But things are going to change because we got neutralization. What's happening here? This is the main focus. When you add something to a buffer, either a, a acid or base, Use neutralization stoichiometry to calculate the new HA concentration and the new A- minus concentration. If it's a base, calculate the new B concentration and BH plus concentration, the factors given to you in the Henderson-Hasbach equation. So I need to figure out, so I gave you those in part A, but they're going to change, right? That HCl, that's an acid, right? 
So a buffer has an acidic component and a basic component. The acetic acid was our acidic component. The acetate ion was the conjugate base or the basic component. So if I add HCl acid to it, the basic component or the acetate ion is going to react with it and neutralize it. So in effect, the acetate ion is going to go down because it's going to react and neutralize the, the HCl. The HCl hopefully goes to zero. If it doesn't, you just obliterated your buffer, right? And you exceeded the buffer capacity, right? The moles of acid you added has to be less than the moles of the conjugate base portion of the buffer. Otherwise, oh, no more buffer, death and destruction, right? And what's going to happen is the uh, acetic acid will go up, right? Because it's going to be formed after the neutralization. So let's set up the neutralization uh, equation and take a look at how the moles, and I'm going to do this in millimoles because we have volumes of milliliters. So I'm going to use millimoles to, to, as a shortcut, save some time, and figure out what the new concentrations are for our HA and our A minus. Let me put up a new board. All right. Hopefully you can see we're going to set up. This will really help you a lot. Uh, some of you could probably see this in your head, but I need this. I'm going to set up this neutralization equation, right? I'm adding this strong acid. So I'm going to have to figure out how many millimoles of this hydronium ion I added, which will be equal to the millimoles of the uh, HCl. Or you do moles if you don't like millimoles. That's fine. It just takes, you got a bunch of 1,000 to 1 milliliter liter conversions you could avoid if you use millimoles. You'll see how it works out. That add, that's going to react with the basic portion of the buffer, right, which is our conjugate base, the acetate ion, the A-. minus. That's going to react with this. It's going to take the H plus, forming water and acetic acid. So this is the other component of the buffer. What's going to happen is the original millimoles of the acetate is going to go down because it's reacting with that, right? So it's going to go down by the number of millimoles of this because the one to one mole ratio. This goes to zero. As long as the added acid moles is less than that, then that will go to zero. If it's the other way around, like I said, you exceed the buffer capacity, which is kind of dumb to do that problem. Do you agree this is going to be formed? So this will be formed. So the original millimoles of the um, acetic acid is going to increase after neutralization because we're going to be forming it. And it'll increase the same number of moles or millimoles as this strong acid added. So what you need to do is figure out, after uh, adding these together, what's the constant, you know, actually, before you do the concentrations, it might be easier to just calculate millimoles. Calculate the initial millimoles of the acetate ion based on the volumes and the concentrations. Calculate the initial millimoles of the acetic acid based on the uh, volume and the concentration. Before mixing, Calculate the initial millimoles of the hydronium ion based on the concentration and volume before mixing with the buffer. And then what we'll do is we'll go after mixing, how do these millimoles adjust up or down? And then we can divide by the final volume and calculate concentration. So go do that for me real quick and then I'll set it up. All right, this is going to put some thumping in your temples here. Good review from first semester of general chemistry. Neutralization stoichiometry. All right, here we go. So we're Adding strong acid, the conjugate base is going to neutralize it, forming the acetic acid, right? This will go down, that should go to zero, that'll go up when we add them. But let's look at what we have to start. You can't figure out what you got unless you know what you're starting with, right? So let's figure out what we're starting with, and then we'll uh, add, you know, the HCl and then figure out what we end up with. So initially, our conjugate base, the acetate ion, right? Let's get the initial, you can do moles or millimoles. We have 90.00 milliliters of the buffer solution before we add the acid, right? And a concentration of 0.521 molar, which is 0.521 moles of solute per liter solution or 0.521 millimoles of solute per milliliter solution. As long as you've got the same metric prefix on the top and bottom, the number doesn't change. So I'm just going to take that 90.00 milliliters of solution of the buffer initially times 0.521 millimoles of acetate ion per milliliter solution, and then the milliliters of solution cancel out. Remember, concentration is a conversion factor between the volume of the solution and the amount of the solute. In this case, with molarity, it's moles or millimoles, uh, depending on what the volume is. If you do liters, it'll be uh, moles. If you do milliliters, it'll be millimoles. So that gives us four significant figures in the volume and three significant figures in the concentration. Oh, we should have done four. Give me 46.890 millimoles of acetate ion, good to three significant digits, initially before we add the acid. That's an important number. Let's do the same thing for the acetic acid, the HA. 
Well, again, that's from the same buffer. We got 90.0 milliliters of solution times a, a molarity of 0.456, which is 0.456 millimoles of acetic acid solute per milliliter of solution. Bloom, bloom. Solution units cancels out. That gives me 41.040 millimoles of acetic acid a, or HA to start with. Good to three significant figures. Those are my starting amounts. How much acid am I adding? All right. Well, how much did I add? 10.00 milliliters, if you read the problem. So I added 10.00 milliliters of the HCl solution, concentration of 0.124 molar. So that would be 0.124 millimoles of HCl solute per milliliter of solution. Solution units cancel out. And since it's a strong acid, for every millimole or mole of HCl, you get one millimole or mole of H3O+. So you don't really need that step. You can do that in your head because it's a strong acid. That means we added 1.24 millimoles of hydronium ion. Okay? So we're starting with 46.890 millimoles of the acetate ion, our conjugate base, starting with 41.040 millimoles of our acetic acid, and we're adding 1.24 millimoles of hydronium ion. So set up the next board. See, well, board, right on your paper. See if you can calculate the concentrations of acetic acid and acetate ion after adding the acid. Because remember, the, the acetate ion is going to go down by 1.24 millimoles because that's how much hydronium is reacting in a 1 to 1 ratio. The acetic acid is going to go up by 1.24 millimoles because it's a 1 to 1 mole ratio. This is going to go to zero. Because notice we have more millimoles of the conjugate base than we do of the acid. So we're not exceeding the buffer capacity. So this goes to zero. This goes down by 1.24 millimoles. This goes up by 1.24 millimoles. So calculate the new millimoles formed and divide by the new volume after we mix them, which is the volume of the buffer plus the volume of the acid added. Oh, give it a shot. I'll set up the next board. Did you get it? All right, here we go. <clears throat> this is the key. What's the new concentration of our conjugate base, the acetate ion, after adding the acid? What's the new concentration of the acetic acid, the HA, after adding the strong acid, right? Because this is going to go up, that's going to go down. So we calculated the initial millimoles of the acetate ion as 46.890 millimoles, right? Good to three sig figs. We're reducing that by 1.24 millimoles. That's the acid that we added. That's the strong acid. And they're neutralizing, one to one mole ratio. We're going to divide that by the total volume of the resulting solution, which was the 90.00 milliliters of the original buffer, plus the 10.00 milliliters of the added hydrochloric acid solution. So if you take the initial millimoles of the acetate ion, minus the millimoles of the hydronium ion added, you end up with 54.650 millimoles of acetate left over. Good to one decimal place, because you have one decimal place here and two decimal places there. Divided by 100.00 milliliters of total solution. The 90 from the buffer, the 10 from the acid. So divide those, I get 0 0.45650 millimoles per milliliter, which is molarity, moles per liter or millimoles per milliliter. Good to three significant figures. So 0 0.45650 molar acetate. That's the new acetate concentration, which is different than what it was in the original buffer because we added the acid to it. So not only did the acid reduce the millimoles of it, we also added volume and diluted it. Okay, the double Double-edged sword there. Let's look at the new acetic acid concentration. We started with an initial millimoles in the initial buffer of 41.040 millimoles, good to three sig figs, but we're increasing it by 1.24 millimoles because after adding the hydronium from the strong acid to the conjugate base, we form the acetic acid. So you're decreasing one component of the buffer and increasing the other. That's always how it works. One goes down, one goes up, that ratio. So take the 41.040 millimoles plus 1.24 millimoles. The new millimoles of acetic acid is 42.280 millimoles. Good to one decimal place because you're limited by decimals divided by the total volume, which is the buffer plus the acid, or 100.00 milliliters. Divide these, you got three significant digits in the millimoles of the solute, five significant digits in the volume, so we're limited by three. So we get 0 0.42280 molar acetic acid. That's the new acetic acid concentration. So it goes up 
a little bit because we're forming more millimoles of the acid, but it also goes down because the volume increased, right? So the, so it's contradicting things there, but it's going to be different, right? You're diluting it and you're increasing the amount of solute, but you're, you're um, yeah, so that's going up, but that's also going up as well. So you don't know. This may be higher or lower than the initial amount, the initial buffer. It's hard to tell sometimes. All right, so this is your A minus. This is your HA for your henderson hasselbach equation. Plug that in. I'm going to do that on a new board. You should be able to pop this out and compare, calculate the pH of this and compare it to what the original pH of the buffer was. And look at the change that occurs when we added 10 mils of a strong acid. That would just obliterate water, man. Water's pH would just plummet in that scenario from 7 down to way down, like 3 or something or less. So see what the pH change is for this. Give it a shot, gang. We're at the final stretch, my friends, which is a good thing because the sun's coming around. I can't do videos late in the afternoon because the sun comes through and just beams me right in the face and glares off the board. I learned that in the first couple videos where there's this white line of of sunlight coming through the blinds right across my eyeballs. <laughs> Pretty crazy, like a Cylon or something. All right, let's set up the henderson hasselbach equation. Again, that's always provided for you. And this is for a weak acid buffer. If it was a weak base buffer, we would do the POH is the PKB plus the log of the BH plus over B. Okay, no big deal. All right, so to pee on something, to take the negative log, just like we did in part A, the negative log of the Ka, the Ka for acetic acid was 1.8 times 10 minus 5. That's exactly the same as part A. That does not change. That's our baseline. We're adjusting the, kind of the pH of the buffer based on the concentration ratio of the conjugate base to the weak acid. All right, so our A minus, our uh, acetate ion concentration after adding the buffer and, neutral, and neutralization occurs and dilution occurs, we got 0 0.45650 molar, good to three significant digits. The new HA, or acetic acid concentration, after the neutralization, after the dilution, was 0 0.42280 molar, good to three significant digits, molarity cancels out. So the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to minus 5, two significant digits, gives you two decimals, is 4.7447. That's what we got in part A. And then if you take the 0 0.45650 divided by 0 0.42280, you get 1.097. This is where you can compare it to part A. That ratio of A minus over HA was different in part A. Adding that strong acid changed that ratio, didn't it? So if we take the log of that, we're going to get 0 0.03330. Three, de three significant figures in the concentration gives us three decimal places in, after we take the logarithm. So we're going to get the baseline of 4.7447, good to two decimals, plus the adjustment for the concentration ratio change of 0 0.03330, good to three decimal places. So two decimals, three decimals, our answer will be good to two decimal places. So I get 4.7780, good to two decimals. That's going to round up. It's closer to 4.78. So the new pH after adding the strong acid is 4.78. Let's, comp let's compare that to what we started with. In part A, the original buffer was 4.80. We added 10 mils, that's not a small amount, of a fairly decent concentration of a strong acid. Wham! That would, have, again, just killed the, the, the pH of water. It would have just plummeted. It dropped by 0 0.02 pH units, right? So again, buffers don't prevent a change in pH, but they certainly minimize it. And this is why you are alive and watching this, because the buffers in your system are phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Buffers rock, gang. So that's going to be it for Chapter 17 for a while. We're, we did the common ion effect. We did buffers. We'll do titrations later. So what I'm going to do now is jump into some more equilibria on uh, slightly soluble solids and complex ions. Once we finish that, then I will jump back into uh, some other stuff. See you later, guys.